Hello boys, what tapes do we have here? I have a VHS tape. It's bulky and the quality is poor. I have a double-sided Video 2000 tape. It works occasionally. I have a beta tape. So, VHS, Video 2000 and beta. Which of these had a long-term future? Which of these was not a technological dead end? Which of these would sell right the way through to high definition digital video and make its manufacturer really serious money? Which of these made it through to the year 2016? It sold all over the world and sold in such large quantities it completely killed off the competition. This is the story of how Beta won. Well, it certainly had the last laugh. Let's start by killing off Video 2000. If you're not from Europe, and even possibly if you are, you won't know what this is about. This is a double-sided cassette, like a giant audio cassette, that could play and record both sides. It was made by Philips, and one of the nice features of it, as well as the long running times, because it plays both sides, is that nearly all of the machines could do really good trick functions. So they could do really nice freeze frame and picture search and slow motion in better quality than was possible, certainly at the time, with VHS and Beta. But it didn't sell in very large numbers, and rightly so, because it was unreliable. The machines were over complex and quirkily built, possibly rushed to market. Uh, they never got the reliability problem solved on this format. And since it wasn't going to go anywhere in terms of rental, because it was a third player, it died off quite soon. And it never got even some of the basic um, enhancements that uh, you saw in VHS and Beta. For example, there was no hi-fi stereo sound. So uh, it died, and rightly so, I would say. The picture quality as well hmm, wasn't great because they crammed so much into the tape they actually only used half of the width of the tape in each recording so even though it's a half inch tape it was working like a quarter inch recording format too much trying to squeeze onto too little tape and would you believe they did a long play version as well uh, to get double the running time so you could have two times eight hours on each side of the tape but the quality was just shocking so in the technological dustbin, that one goes. Now, while VHS may have uh, done okay in the uh, domestic market, it didn't really have a technological long-term future. Now, there have been some great videos done by Techmoan and Linus Tech Tips about how there was an attempt at making this run on into the digital era in high definition. So it was in high definition VHS format. But uh, it did not do very well. Uh, a handful of uh, pre-recorded films were released on it. Uh, a few machines were sold in the UK. And my understanding is they wouldn't even, some of them, play each other's tapes. It was just a mess. Uh, the format was expensive and unreliable. Uh, so, technologically, it kind of stopped there with VHS. What did they do to try to improve things? Well, since the picture quality was so shockingly poor, they made Super VHS and I have a lot of Super VHS video recorders. One of the things that they improved with Super VHS was the resolution, but only the resolution of the luminance, the brightness. The chroma colour performance of Super VHS is exactly the same as ordinary rubbish domestic VHS. So it didn't get much use outside the home, even though in theory Looking at it, it had good enough resolution for broadcast use or studio use. It got virtually no studio use because the colour performance was just awful. Was there ever an attempt to make something better from VHS? Well, there was. There was a format called M from Panasonic. Terrible name, but it's due to the M wrap loading of VHS. So it used a standard VHS cassette, uh, but ran the tape at much higher speed on a very big machine and gave studio quality results. But it wasn't a great success. It didn't sell very well at all. So Panasonic had another go 
and we'll see what they were competing against later with beta. But they had a go with this format called M2. So this time the cassette, though it's a similar size to VHS, the actual tape itself is somewhat different, it's incompatible. This uses a metal tape and gives good quality studio performance. As you can see, Thames Television bought it. Almost nobody else did. The format flopped. It couldn't compete with beta derived formats, which we'll come to later. The machines, I've worked on some of them. You see me repair on, uh, some M2 uh, format video recorders on my channel. And that's because the M2 format was known for being unreliable. Part of the problem was that the tapes are too big. You can't really put that into even a professional size camcorder. It's too lumpy. So they had to uh, decide that that's going to be the studio size tape and then make a smaller tape for camera use. Let me show you that. So here's a smaller tape and it fits in the same machine as that large M2 tape with a shorter recording time. So in order to get a long recording time on this, they had to make the tape thin. And that made the mechanism rather complicated. Uh, you should see them. There's all sorts of dancing levers and things flying around during the lace and unlace. Unreliable and overcomplicated. Tell you what I've got here. Don't tell anybody. This is quite unusual. This Thames television tape is called Good King Memorex, the BBC Christmas bloopers tape. <laughs> So obviously the BBC and ITV studios uh, were friends really. So why am I getting so smug about Beta? Well first thing to get straight is it's called Beta, not Betamax. And that's true even the domestic machines. Sony branded Beta as Betamax, but other manufacturers didn't. And my lovely old friend here, Tosh, is branded Beta Video. So that's not Betamax, it's Beta. And by the way, this Tosh does work and uh, have a look at my previous videos. You can see me uh, working on it. Let's take this domestic Beta tape and show you what I can put it into. This is a professional Beta Cam video recorder. OK, let me explain what's going on here. The domestic Betamax tape was used in a professional format by Sony, which was released in the early 80s, called Betacam. It used exactly the same tapes. They were interchangeable. They made Betacam branded tapes, and they may have made some minor improvements internally, but they were interchangeable. The recordings were not, of course, in just the same way as high definition VHS tapes wouldn't play on a normal VHS machine. The beta cam recordings wouldn't play on a domestic machine. And the only real difference is there was no backwards compatibility in the professional equipment either. So you couldn't play a domestic Betamax tape on a professional beta cam machine. But otherwise the tapes themselves were interchangeable. That was a great format beta cam but more was wanted, so they made a higher resolution version called Betacam SP with metal tape loaded. And here we have a Betacam SP tape. And as you can see, it's extremely similar, and mechanically the same, to the domestic Betamax tape. They put some ident holes in here so the machine could detect what kind of tape it is. Interestingly, if you watch the Wally -E film where Wally is playing a Betamax tape, you will see that they actually, clearly the people in the studio didn't have a Betamax tape to hand and they made it from a Betacam tape and the ident holes are there for Betacam, which is a mistake. You could put that tape into a Betamax domestic video recorder. It wouldn't necessarily do it any good because it's a metal tape. 
Uh, so most domestic machines wouldn't like that. There were some special ones made, Beta, uh, Beta Max uh, Extended Definition, which would run on them. But generally, not a good idea. You could wear the heads out rather badly. But it would make a recording. I've seen it done. Just not wise. So Betacam SP became a great format for putting into professional camcorders. But running time is limited to around about 30 minutes on these tapes. Longer tapes were needed. So large Betacam SP tapes were made that would fit in the same machine. Not the same camera, of course, it's too big for a camera, but that would give you much longer running times, up to about, I think, 90 odd minutes on Betacam SP. So can you see how this solved the problem of running time in a more intelligent way than the M2 format? Because the M2 format went for a smaller tape for cameras, but ended up with extremely thin tape and unreliable mechanisms. And the beta cam format went for larger studio tapes where size isn't really a problem. So if you're engineering manager back in the 1990s, of a, a TV studio and you have to choose between a beta based format and a VHS based format which you're going to select. Well you'd be a fool to select the VHS one really. The format totally bombed and so it just couldn't get a look in. Everybody was so set on beta, everybody had beta in all the studios it became a de facto standard every studio would interchange tapes on beta, not on VHS based formats like M2. So beta mopped up and there we have it, you see, exactly the opposite situation in to the domestic market where if there's going to be just one format wins, it's going to be the best one in this case. Later on, digital was required. In TV studios, it's a major leap forward to have a digital tape rather than analog because you can make as many dubs, edits and copies as you require and keep the full original quality because there'd be a digital connection between the machines. So what you'd really want is a digital beta cam tape. So there it is. Still exactly the same format, form factor as the original domestic Betamax tape. Of course the recordings are incompatible, but it shows still very much a lineage between domestic beta and beta cam machines. And some beta cam machines will still accept that tape and play it if it's been recorded in the first type of analog beta cam recording. So this more than a dotted line connection between these, these will fit in the same machine. Of course, there's a larger size as well for studio use of digital beta cam. And of course, that fits in the same machine. So we still have a machine that will play that tape and under some circumstances, play that domestic Betamax tape if it has the correct kind of recording on it. So you can imagine that the makers of the M2 format were a little bit miffed to see Sony taking all their business away with the uh, digital beta cam. They had nothing to compete. So of course they brought something out. It was called D3 and it didn't sell very well, of course, but BBC bought some D3 machines and started using it to archive uh, some of their older materials. So they had it in a digital format. Why did they choose D3 and not digital beta cam? Well, it turned out to be a terrible mistake because the machines got discontinued and they're now left with a vast archive of D3 recordings and the machines are going to wear out before they ever manage to get them transferred off that obsolete format. D3 was followed by D5 or D5 HD. So, OK, now we've got high definition on a VHS size tape. You can imagine how successful the D5 format was. What about high definition for beta? Oh yes, of course. HD cam, still exactly the same form factor as the original Betamax tape. So this is a professional high definition format from Sony, which was used a lot in studios. 
and there's two variants of this there's HD cam and HD cam SR I have machines for both and you have no idea how expensive these machines were so HD cam SR machines cost many tens of thousands of pounds uh, in fact fully decked out it probably wouldn't leave you an awful lot of change of a hundred thousand pound including the VAT for uh, the top of the line HD cam SR machines some of them could do 3d as well they had all kinds of upgrade options you could have with them for transcoding different kinds of formats so they were massively expensive and you can imagine the sort of money Sony were making from selling those this was at a time when you could buy a domestic VHS machine for around about 30 or 40 pound imagine how many how much profit you'd have to make on some 30 or 40 pound video recorders to make anything like the sort of numbers that Sony were making selling all these high definition uh, video recorders to TV studios throughout the world and HD cam SR was only discontinued officially by Sony in 2016 and the machines still fetch many thousands of pounds so it was a massive success whereas the VHS based digital format uh, D3 and D5 uh, didn't really go anywhere there was another VHS based digital format as well and I've got one of those there is this one it's called D9 or digital S and it records on a VHS sized tape well again this one has a little bit more actually to do with VHS because under certain circumstances you could actually play Super VHS tapes in some of the machines that recorded this so it was a little bit more VHS based in that way but uh, the format flunked now I have a machine for it and kind of what it is is a, a melding together of the VHS deck and the codec used in DVC Pro 50 which was a normally a mini DV based format uh, there was DVC Pro uh, which was a competition for DV cam which were both professional versions of mini DV tapes that you get in a normal domestic camcorder in the 2000s and a higher bitrate version of that was on some DVC Pro machines and they ported that over to a VHS based deck and these tapes are actually interchangeable I believe with DVHS now the recordings aren't but the, rec the tape itself is so uh, that format did about as well as DVHS did one of the mistakes they made with the some of the machines here and I have uh, a D9 machine is anybody who's using that in a studio environment wants digital input and output ports and they want two they want firewire which is the same as dv and they want sdi which is professional uh, higher date data rate connection used in studios and they need to be fitted as standard to all the d9 digital s format video recorders so they would be easy to connect they didn't do that you could have an optional extra of a digital port of one type or the other but you couldn't just have both fitted as standard to make the machine useful and right there and then that just makes the machines undesirable for the studio use so uh, I think they messed up and the format deserved its fate domestic Betamax got some more use uh, in a professional environment using normal domestic tapes and video recorders and what that was was in the early days of CD mastering sometimes recording studios wanted to archive material or share material and what they would do is record pulse code modulation PCM digital audio into the video stream of a Betamax tape using PCM equipment made by Sony primarily and I have a full set of that equipment and certain models of Betamax machine were specially tailored for use in that way they would switch off something called the dropout compensator that made the system work really well for PCM digital audio and as Techmoan will point out there was a digital VHS recording format too and guess what it failed hardly anyone bought it whereas the beta based uh, PCM digital audio did extremely well in 
high-end consumer and also in recording studios. Other formats were used as well. Uh, Umatic was used for PCM Digital Audio for the mastering of CDs and I've got equipment for that and I've featured that on several videos as well. Something else I want to show you is the professional tapes use exactly the same magnetic foil as their leader tape which is detected by a coil which uh, measures uh, inductance inside the machine. Exactly the same as on Betamax and it's more reliable than the optical clear leader tape used on VHS and its uh, VHS derived formats. So uh, another win for Beta. So what I want you to take away from all this is that Beta didn't just fail in the mid 80s and that was the end of it. Sony carried on to develop Beta in the professional arena where it had a long successful and profitable career whereas all the VHS derived formats didn't get a foothold in the marketplace. So next time your mate's deriding Betamax as some sort of disaster, you can put him right. Beta had the last laugh. I'll do plenty more content on audio and video technology in the near future. Bye for now.